Good morning. Welcome in. I hope you're doing uh, well on this Monday morning. We survived the storms, and uh, what a storm it was, wasn't it? My goodness. Uh, it was storming right after I got home from preaching a, a funeral yesterday, and uh, been quite a weekend. We had a great church service yesterday. If you wasn't able to be there, I encourage you to go to the website, uh, check out that link. I don't think it's on the main page just yet. It's over on the Watch Live tab, but it should be moved over this morning. Uh, so if you don't find it on the Watch Live tab, you'll know that you can go over to the main page and scroll down. There's usually three sermon videos uh, down there for you to see. Uh, we'll get right into uh, a little bit of a devotion this morning. We're kind of walking our way through Matthew. And so today I'm going to Matthew chapter 9. and going to read verse 20 where it says, Behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years, came behind him, him being Jesus, and touched the hem of his garment. Now, this woman with an issue of blood's interaction with Jesus was not a simple matter. It was not um, an easy situation. Her condition had, had been with her for 12 years, we just read. Um, and according to... Uh, Moses' law, the constant flow of blood from her body meant that she was unclean ceremonially. Um, and so the uncleanness made her ineligible to participate in a lot of the Jewish festivals and feasts. Um, even reaching out to touch another person was prohibited. And despite a chronic condition, the woman with the issue of blood still uh, sought healing and she refused to accept things as they were. And so when people choose to take things as they are, whether that is addiction, sickness, uh, depression, they never seek Jesus. When we are satisfied or, or we just settle for where we're at, we never seek Jesus. And so there are several things that indicate the faith of this woman. Number one, she showed up. Her condition left her weak but she did not stay home because she was weak. Hearing that Jesus was near, she went where Jesus was. Maybe you're watching this video today. I wanna to encourage you in church attendance, okay? And I've kind of been on this for a couple of days. I mentioned it in my sermon yesterday. If there's ever a time that we need to be gathering with God's people, it's right now. There are a lot of lonely people in our world. There are a lot of people that are suffering with depression and uh, sicknesses and that kind of thing. Now, obviously, we have to take precautions, and we're doing that at Harvest Church, but I still believe that we need to allow a place for God to work and for us to gather together and to believe together for great things. So the first thing she did was, even though she was sick, she showed up. So note that, number one, she showed up. Even though it was ceremonially uh, not the right thing to do, uh, she knew she had to get to Jesus. The second thing was she was determined. She was determined. Uh, Jesus attracted crowds of people uh, pressing in against him. They were all around him. And uh, getting near Jesus that day was not an easy task. Her pressing through the group meant that she ignored the prohibition about an unclean person uh, touching someone. The press of the crowd, not the prohibition of Moses' law, is what was stopping her. And she said, I am determined. I'm going to move beyond, uh, I'm going to move beyond uh, the uh, the crowd. I'm going to do everything that I can to get to Jesus. Not only am I going to show up, and that's a very big part of this, she had to show up. Not only is it important for you to go to church, the second thing is, is come with a determined heart. I'm going to touch Jesus. And then the third thing she did was she took hold. The Greek word translated touched by the King James uh, could be translated as clutched, clutched. Um, and, 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 so when I look at that, I, I notice this touch was not just the the the, the, uh, the casual brushing up again. No, she grabbed hold of. She took hold of Jesus' garment. Um, I, I remember uh, when my little boy was just a little bit smaller than he is now. If he wanted me to pick him up, he didn't just come up and tap me, or he didn't just come up and say, "Hey, Dad, I want you to pick me up." He would literally grab a hold of my leg, sit down on my foot to where everywhere that I was going, I was picking him up with my foot. <laughs> and so he was determined, wherever you're going, daddy, I wanna go. 
You know what? It still works for those that need something from the Lord Jesus Christ. Show up, be determined, and say, God, I'm going to take hold with no intention of letting go until you bless me. We need that Jacob moment. I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Now, I want to ask you some questions today. If you had been this woman, how would you have felt about the restrictions placed upon you in Jewish law? Um, maybe I want you to imagine with me today being that woman who has that chronic condition and uh, who has seen so many doctors and tried uh, you know, all of the available remedies, and, and yet your situation continues to get worse. Your situation continues to get worse. What would it take to inspire you to have a faith in Jesus Christ? And then one that all of us could uh, relate to today. What is the figurative crowd that hinders you from seeking Jesus? What action do you need to take to press your way through whatever that figurative crowd is so that you can take hold of the promises of God, so that you can touch the hem of his garment and receive what you need? I hope I'm encouraging you today. Three things you need to do. You need to show up. You need to get into the house of God. You need to allow yourself to be in the presence of other believers that can strengthen you. The second thing you need to do is you need to come determined. Don't just show up and sit down in a seat and say, okay, God, here I am. No, be determined that you need something from the Lord and be determined that you're gonna receive it. And the third thing is to do, don't just come with good intentions, but take hold. Worship, praise God, get in his presence, but take hold of the word of God and live that word on a Monday that you just heard yesterday on a Sunday. God wants to do the miraculous in our midst. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget Children's Church tonight, Harvest Kids Online at seven o'clock. Those of you that uh, are uh, aware of the Chuck Samples uh, situation, he passed away on Saturday, uh, actually early, early Sunday morning, I believe, uh, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. And uh, they're doing his visitation tonight, five to seven, Shelton Hunt and Humboldt, and also a funeral at seven o'clock tonight. It'll be short, it will not be long. Um, and uh, we're just going to have a, a short service there together at Shelton Hunt in Humboldt tonight. Be in prayer for uh, these families that are affected. Uh, it affects multiple families in our church. We'll be praying for them. This is our third funeral connected to the church in a matter of about four days. And uh, But we're thankful that God is faithful to us and is bringing us through. And uh, we're thankful that uh, we continue to see great things at the church, new faces, new people responding to God. God's doing a great work in these last days. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday.